Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering's 10th anniversary events taking place today and tomorrow. My name is Felix Liu. I serve as the Director of Corporate Engagement for the PME. My job includes evangelizing the PME and facilitating connections between industry and the resources of the university. So please feel free to talk to me about anything even loosely related to this. I want to add that um, for the purposes of this event, masks can be removed up here while you're in camera, uh, but we highly encourage masking uh, otherwise, especially when social distancing is compromised. So a little bit about me. I've been here just over three years observing and helping to drive new ways of thinking about cutting edge engineering education and technology insertion into the innovation ecosystem. I was trained as a semiconductor scientist, worked at a large aerospace company uh, in their satellite division, working on reliability of materials and devices for space applications. I then uh, co-founded a high technology startup. And through these experiences, I gained a little bit of insight into the industrial innovation process. After that, I accidentally pivoted into this university industry outreach and interaction space. Um, which is a very fun space to be in. So as many of you know, this, this space between universities and industry um, is a very fertile area. Oops, I should. It's a very fertile area waiting to be properly nurtured and tapped. Uh, the secret ingredients to maximize this harvest are often a combination of things that people would, with 2020 hindsight, characterize as common sense. Um, but if you talk to people in working in the area, you've, you find a little more granularity. And they talk about things like increasing awareness, not only of critical issues, but how others are thinking about these solutions. They include both shotgun and strategic networking. And of course, there's managing expectations in each bespoke environment. But everyone sort of knows this. I mean, it's a little bit dry and a little boring to talk about those kind of things. I wanted to inject a little spice in the discussion and, and share some some words of wisdom I heard at a recent workshop uh, given by a consultant in this field by the name of Jim Eichner. And so the first thing he said I wanted to share was a lot of problems come from looking at solutions exclusively through the lens of technology. A lot of problems come from looking at solutions exclusively through the lens of technology. Interesting, right? Um, a little bit antithetical given that we are at a high-profile engineering school with a room full of engineers who like to apply technology to solve problems. But just keep that in mind. The next point I want to share is that technologies often only succeed in clusters. And he shows three examples of pretty well-known technologies that probably wouldn't be in the same state they are today without all the, uh, the, the co-development of those technologies listed below them. The third thing I want to share is this TRIZ method. Now, TRIZ is a Russian acronym for roughly translated as the theory of inventive problem solving, which by itself makes a pretty nice acronym of TIPS. But I guess the, the Z there makes it look more exotic and more insightful. Um, but the point here is that a conceptual problem in one industry may have a conceptual solution in another industry. Okay, So the message here. I'm trying to, to show is that diversifying your networking circles can be extremely helpful. Okay. And my hope for this event is to mix these first two ingredients, uh, networking and awareness, that will lead to deeper conversations and result in some emerging uh, industry university partnerships. So at the center of all this is the PME. This is why we're here, right? The 10th anniversary. I um, want to share a little background about this for those of you who may not be familiar with this. Um, designed the PME was intentional. Um, not, it was designed not to be like a traditional engineering school uh, with separate departments, but to integrate the transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary thinking right from the ground up. This was put into practice by researchers straddling the boundaries of current thinking and operating among different communities which makes it a very exciting place for companies to get their foot into and to integrate their scientists and engineers into. One of the products of this different design, of course, is talent. Think about the talent that, that is developed um, in this environment. 
And I'll come back to the talent in a bit. The school doesn't have departments, but it has themes. These themes were selected for the significance at the intersection of many things, including materials design potential, societal impact, and the fertility in producing new knowledge. Growth has been very strong in the first decade, going from 1 to 43, with plans to double, so between 80 and 90 faculty and the associated staff, graduate students, and postdocs. The goals are what you might expect. We'd like to significantly increase numbers of critical technology translations and insights. We'd like to build pipelines as a reliable source of talent. And with that talent, uh, excellent communications capabilities and entrepreneurial mindsets. We'd also like to establish a critical mass of industry academic partnerships for new and creative synergies. And then coming back to talent, we all know that one of the major drivers for university industry interactions is talent recruitment and development. So there are many opportunities for recruitment that include not only traditional career fairs, but more surgical approaches such as senior capstone projects, graduate student internships, and postdoc scientist engineer exchanges with industry. Opportunities for development include certificate and master's degree programs to complement the traditional engineering routes. And if you have creative alternatives, we are certainly open to discussing them. So the motivations and desires for this event and track uh, center around the two ingredients I mentioned, awareness and networking. Uh, with awareness, we can start to build partnerships. And strong partnerships can be complex to set up and, and often kind of frustrating. But once they are set up, they are strong wins, not only for the partners, but for the larger communities and regions. Grand challenges, uh, which George, Cra George Crabtree will speak about in a little bit, uh, help guide our passions to the most important problems. And then our thought leaders, the researchers, the faculty, provide many potential solutions. But often these solutions are difficult to understand. So by distilling these solutions in the format of a very popular TED format, It'll help all of us understand these complexities just a little bit better. So I hope I've conveyed to you that the PME is translational by design and intent. Translating and scaling technologies in the commercial space is important, but it's difficult for universities. It can be made much more efficient and perhaps even fun with the right industrial partner. The second point I want to mention is networking. Those of us in the audience that are more seasoned at the art of networking, I implore you to uh, start up conversations with the students who might be a little more shy about this. Uh, impart your wisdom and learn a little bit about their work. Okay, so I want to just run through a quick overview of the agenda today. We've just finished the opening statements. We'll be followed by a discussion led by David Gross with these four panelists here. Uh, this will be followed by a Grand Challenges keynote virtually by George Crabtree from Argonne followed by three rapid-fire faculty TED Talks. Um, this will be uh, followed by lunch, so I hope the faculty don't go too long over, over time. <laughs> uh, followed by uh, a plenary conversation between the Dean Matt Terrell and one of our advisory board members, Antonio Gracias. This will be followed by a couple of panel discussions between alumni and, and uh, faculty here. And then there will be a research poster session in Idenois Hall, which is a separate building. And I would encourage all of you to go to that because the presenters will be trying to present their research in a very accessible way. As you can see, they'll be graded on, on these, by these standards here. And at the end of the day, we will have a social event back in this building.